high responsibility. Thank you very much for uh, your honor for joining us at the International Symposium on Cultural Diplomacy and also for your team. Thank you very much. We would be very grateful if you agree to ask a few questions. You have uh, given a very subtle and nuanced uh, keynote speech on uh, the themes of history, memory, and cultural diplomacy. And uh, you have emphasized by a uh, tour of uh, academic uh, research the dangers of confusing uh, European history with European memory. What is your opinion on cultural diplomacy being a mediator, a possible mediator between these two, uh, two frames of uh, Cultural diplomacy in general is an instrument, is a tool to bring cultures together and make them speak and understand each other, speak the same language if possible, or at least understand each other. Every each culture in the world has its own um, uh, uh, inventory of specific denominations, may they be rituals or habits or uh, favorite ways of um, interpreting the world. This is what distinguishes a culture from another culture. Cultural diplomacy is bringing cultures together by means of dialogue, by exchanging information, so that the seeds of dissent could not be put into the ground. Because whenever these seeds of dissent are watered, they grow into wars and conflicts. There is no such a quote-unquote pure culture in the world. This is the dream of 19th century founders of nation states. It's not our dream today. What we see in reality is that cultures are getting far more colorful because of who enters them, because of different minor factors influ influencing on them. May they be from migrants to different cultural trends. This makes cultures, quote unquote, impure, that is very heteroclitic. And therefore, what is heterogeneous? What is heteroclitic? What is sundry? It's bound to be open towards dialogue. It's not like the walls of a fortress. It's very much like the boundaries of a town. They're open to the world. Now we preach to use cultural diplomacy to make these cultures see each other, feel each other, smell each other, understand each other, thus bringing conflicts off our limits. Now when it comes to history and memory, that's a second stage of understanding and deeper, of understanding what are the seeds of discontent worth up, and when can they bring wars up? When confounding history, which is a narrative, with memory, which is impression, subjectivism, then what comes from our souls is the worst. Because this is what happens between humans. Certainly, we're not Hobbes now to say that homo homini lupus. But on the other hand, we know each other that there is a competition in the world. And if competition has no rules, then we have a problem, then we have a conflict. Now, what we look for is to have history, which is a narrative, we respect. History should not be confounded with um, 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 something that is untrue or a way of, of um, uh, negligating the truth in general. No, a narrative of truth. This should be history. This is what should be taught in schools, for example. This it is what it should be taught for all of us. Whereas memories should not influence history and should not take part into political decisions. That is actually the meaning. 
if you bring subjectivism into political decisions, then it's anger, it's fear, it's fury that are decisive. And these feelings, which are very, these emotions, which are very basic, in fact, when put into political decision, they can ruin the destiny of millions of people. This is how the Second World War came out. Now, we talk about history, and what we want is European history, but attached to a deeper, deeper sentiment, feeling of responsibility. If I'm an European, and I share Europe's history, then I'm responsible for what is within that history. I cannot take off my mind the killing of millions of Jews, millions of Gypsies, millions of Slavs throughout the Second World War. I cannot take off my mind the crimes committed by different authoritarian regimes throughout the 20th century, and so on and so forth. So this was the meaning of my keynote speech today. Cultural diplomacy as a field, uh, as, a, as an extraction, as a development from uh, what is considered public diplomacy on the principles of soft power defined by Joseph Nye. And going towards the people, whom do you see as uh, capable, credible cultural diplomats? People who are former trade diplomats, people who are active in cultural exchanges, public intellectuals. Uh, what would be your suggestion? Let's not look into generations and let us look into uh, fields of interest or academic definitions. It's a matter of sensi it's a matter of sensibility. Whoever is sensitive to culture, whoever is sensitive to the difference between cultures and understands that difference as positive, not as a means for negative comparison, that very individual is actually performing a cultural diplomatic task. May he be aware of it or not? What we do now, the three of us here in this interview, is actually a tribute towards cultural, diplo cultural diplomacy because we are sensitive to culture and we understand the difference between cultures because of our growth, because of our background, etc., etc. But we are different ages, represent different origins, we have different academic backgrounds. What unites us is this sensitivity. This is actually where we should look for when, uh, 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 when, when, when trying, when seeking for cultural diplomats. A violinist who has no, no formal training in diplomacy can he translate a culture into another culture? Yes, he can, because he uses the universal language <coughs> of musical notation and sounds. A, a painter does the same thing. Historians may do the same thing, poets. So it's very much about sensitivity. Yeah. I, I don't want to sound uh, anyway cynical. But in a campaign, um, mostly in a high-end campaign like the presidential campaign, emotions themselves are very industrial. <laughs> that is technologically built and um, put at work. So we're not talking about raw emotions, we're not talking about what one could feel or read into, you know, uh, 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 when, when deeply looking into somebody's eyes. Mm -hmm. It's not that tinkle of light that comes up. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very much instrumental emotions, and those emotions are codified. Um, they can be um, um, engendered, grown, cultivated, manipulated, or terminated by those who have a profession into this, mm -hmm. who are part of the campaign and uh, the team, for, for, for sure. There is, nevertheless, a certain personal chemistry which can be seen at work when 
a candidate delves into a group of people with less security detail around, mm -hmm. mostly by himself, and takes questions and gestures and touches and whatever mm -hmm. comes with um, grace, babies, yes. yes, with grace, with a sense of natureness and sincerity, which is very difficult mm -hmm. in the end. It's, yeah, it's very difficult. I, s I find the the language that you're describing everything with quite remarkable and uh, not normally found in the realm of uh, polit politicians that uh, I encounter. So that's because I'm in the eye of the cyclone. Is that is that it? Um, I will run for the uh, presidential elections in November. Ah. Uh, I think we will we will be there to see it. <laughs> that's very exciting. Well, I wish you most uh, best of luck. Uh, we want to wrap this up. I know they did want me to ask a little bit about your academic background and how you ended up in this field, because I believe, did you start with mathematics? Uh, well, that was my first love, or nevertheless, one of the one of the loves in that long list of first loves. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I uh, switched to history because it is very close to my very soul. So. I just gave myself way towards oh. what I liked. Well, it's all about appreciating the different angles to see something as objectively as possible, I guess. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. We're Thank you very, very honored that you questions. were able to speak with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.